Okay, boys and girls, what I'm going to do is I made a mock-up. And so this might be a little bit easier um, because I can use different colored thread and I can mark on this one and show you um, on this one. And I think it might be a little easier to see. So let me get my... Here is a phone book. And I like to use a phone book because then you can stab through the, you know, you don't have to stab into your counter. <laughs> and so this is what I like to do. I'm just going to do a very simple three hole pamphlet stitch. And I went ahead and just marked on these and you may think, okay, how do I know where to mark? So my general rule of thumb for the three hole pamphlet stitch is I come down from the edges of the book, top and bottom on the spine, at least a half of an inch. And you can, you can move that around. It, it, it doesn't matter too horribly much, but keep it in the upper you know, quarter or the lower quarter. Don't, you know, don't be messing around in the middle because the middle gets its own. So I usually just put this, I just measure and put a row in the middle. Now we're doing four signatures. So we have a row up at the tippity top and I mark it with a T and then I have a row of four and a row of four. And I did not measure these. I just took a pencil and evenly spaced out um, four holes across the side of the spine. If you um, love math <laughs> and you want to measure and draw lines and get everything exactly spaced, go for it. That is probably even better. Um, I've made a few books and so I, I generally know what what I'm generally, that's my disclaimer, I generally know what I'm doing. So um, if you don't want to draw on your book, you can make yourself a little template and this is just a piece of paper, just a scrap piece of paper that I've cut to the exact size of the spine and just make sure that when you close your covers that it can stay inside without like buckling in the, you know, don't make it too wide. And then that way you can place this on top of your spine and then you can punch through it and then you take this away and you can use this on another book. That's what's nice about templates is you can just reuse them. Um, but since this is just a mock-up, I just I just drew on this one. This is a ice pick. And I'm just gonna punch all the holes. All the way through into the book underneath. Okay, and if you turn it around, you see the holes. I wasn't super careful. <laughs> so I also make, get off. I also take another piece of paper that is um, the same height as your book, and I fold it in half like so, and I, I line it up to the edge like this, and then I take a pencil and I mark where the rows are, just like that. Because this is the template that I'm going to use to stab through my papers, through my signatures. And you want these holes in your signatures to match these holes. You don't want your signature like, you know, ending up up here, or, you know, down here, or, you know, cattywampus. So, this is what I do. I'm gonna set that aside for now. Just gonna open this up. And you get another phone book. Remember back in the day, we used phone books. Um, now I actually want one for this purpose, and I let, I never get one. It's like I, I think they, I think they're not putting them out as much. <clears throat> so I need to get a book cradle. Is what I need to get. All right. So I usually put this down in, in the little the little valley here, and here's my. Here's my template. Also mark the template with a T so that you don't get it upside down. You want the you want the the measurements to be all the same. So I'm going to just place that in our little valley just like that in the middle of your signature. Yeah. 
and we're going to stab through. And that's it. That's all she wrote, man. Okay. Put that stuff aside. So, here's our top. This is how we sew in each signature. Each signature is sewn in the exact same way. All four of them. This, this book will have this template, this mock-up is supposed to have four because this is a similar size to our McGuffey. So um, this one will have four just like that. And so what, this is what we do. We start in the middle hole. So put your, your needle and I'm using black thread so that you can see it well. But normally I use just upholstery thread nice thick strong upholstery thread and this one just happens to be like a taupey color or waxed linen thread uh, you can use embroidery floss if you want it to be colorful you know just use a nice strong thread of some kind you'll be just fine so we go through the middle the first signature of course is going to be attached to your first row that's nearest the front cover so we put this through and we're gonna put the needle through the corresponding hole in the spine. Pull it through, but leave yourself a tail of about three inches or so. And one thing you can do, hold on just a second, let me grab. So this might make it easier on you. If you take some clips and you clip your your signature to your cover. <clears throat> so um, sometimes, sometimes this works out, sometimes it doesn't work out. It depends on your cover, but um, you can also just paper clip just the signature together so your pages don't get all, you know. So anyway, so what we do is we go down to the bottom hole in that first row and we go in and we fish it through to the bottom holes in your pages. And don't forget, we gotta leave our tail there. So then we take our needle and we stretch it all the way up to the top holes in our pages and then through the corresponding hole in the spine. And I'm trying not to get everything caught on the the clip the clips and the corner and you know that takes some practice I, I still I still get stuff caught <laughs> all the time and then we're gonna go back through see just like that mm hmm just just like that I'm good at that so we're gonna go back through that middle hole and then find the hole in your signatures and bring it through there just like that now we wanna make sure that everything is nice and taut. Uh, you don't want your signatures loose in your book. So pull on that and, but I mean, try not to break your thread because you know, that can happen too. And then, oh, and then it's, you know, then you just wanna punch a wall or something, right? Okay, so let me fit that under here. Sometimes I will do, the tail goes on one side and then where I just pulled it through goes on the other side of this. Do you see how loose that is? We don't want that. So keep, keep pulling until it sounds more like a guitar string. And then tie yourself a knot with the tail and with the needle thread that you just pulled through. Just like that. Now you can take your scissors and you can trim those off. You can trim them real short if you want. Some people will take like little punches like, hold on, like little butterflies or something and so they will they will punch. I'll take some paper and sometimes it's even pretty paper. <laughs> 
and they will lay the, the tail on one side of the butterfly, put some glue on this one, and then glue both of the butterflies together with the tail in there, and then you've got like little charms hanging. You can do all sorts of little things, but some people do that. Some people cut them really short. You can do whatever floats your boat. But all the signatures are sewn in this exact same way. So just repeat four times for, for this book, okay? That's all I was gonna do. And then here is, here is the spine and the, um, the threads, you will have a stretch here and a stretch here. And there are many, 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 many ways to sew in signatures. This is just one of the easier ways, but if you search um, on YouTube or Google or Pinterest, all kinds, there are decorative ways to, if you're gonna show your stitches and you want decorative ways, um, there's like too many to mention. So you can get real, real complicated. Okay, so that is how your signatures are sewn in. Super easy. So that is this guy. I've sewn all the pages into this book. And then I took a stretch of ribbon and I glued it to the spine over those stitches and then that keeps it nice and secure. You don't have to do that. That is not, not necessary in any way whatsoever. Here is our Binky Binky Boy. And I did the same stitch in there. You'll see one, two, three. And here's my little twine in the middle where I tied, where I tied off everything. And then I also used that same crochet ribbon on the spine to protect those stitches. And here is our little fabric covered little binky book. Isn't it good? It's so good. Okay. And then here is the McGuffey. And you remember in the McGuffey, we were going to um, perhaps cover our spine with some fabric. So I have a piece of fabric here. Again, this one is done the exact same way, um, all sewn in together, exact same way. There's my, there's my threads in the middle. Okay, oh, here we go. Um, here is just a piece of um, cotton. I think it's like quilters, like a thin, lightweight quilters cotton. You can use ribbons like we used on these books. You can use all kinds of things, um, a strip of leather or, I mean, all kinds of things. So, so think about what you can use. What I'm going to do is I'm just gonna glue this on um, right over where the graphic shows where that, where this had, you know, where this book originally had this, you know, this some kind of, of cloth binding. So let me grab my glue. Again, just using the Fabrifix. But whatever you'd like to use, go for it. And since I cut this, I cut this um, the same width as, as where this graphic is, I, I'm gonna put some glue along, along here. Come on, glue. So I'm gonna put some glue, and this will keep your stitches um, secure, more secure, I think. And then I'm gonna put some glue right along where I know the fabric's gonna hit. And you can also put glue on the back of your fabric if you would rather, or your ribbon, or you know, whatever you'd like to do. You can glue, you can add glue to whatever you wanna add glue to. But I know I cut it just so that it would end up on the edge of that graphic. Okay. I put way too much glue kind of globbed out on me. So I'm just gonna smear that out a little bit. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Ah! Now I have like, like glue all over my hands. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm gonna leave a little bit of fabric hanging off the top and the bottom. Oh, 
press that down. And the Fabrifix, um, while it's wet, you'll be able to tell it's wet because it's cold. Like you put your hand down on this and it's cold. When it's room temperature, it's not, um, it's not uh, wet anymore. It's kind of an interesting glue. I think it's because it has acetone in it. So here is our little leather, I mean our little fabric spine. What I like about the fabric or the, um, the trims, the ribbons and stuff, they, uh, they stretch. They stretch a little bit better than paper. Paper can crack on you. Okay, so what I wanted to do is pull, cut that a little shorter. <laughs> it's gonna take me forever if I, and then, well, the bottom one is short. So I'm just gonna pull that and let that fabric fray. And then you can have, it looks a little messier, it looks a little um, older, a little more worn, a little more used, a little more loved. You don't have to do that. You can absolutely, definitely, positively um, just trim it the same size as your cover. It's absolutely up to you. Some fabrics will fray, some will not. You know, leather's not gonna fray, so. You can cut it all crooked and make it look old though. Okay, so we have like a little, a little fringy fringe. Come on camera, come on camera, camera. So we have a little fringy fringe at the top and the bottom and our stitches are all encased and so um, it's gonna be nice and secure in there and you can write to your heart's content and shove pictures in here and your pages are not going to go anywhere. Uh, but how simple was that? I mean, how simple was that? You can use all kinds of graphics, all kinds of scrapbook paper. Um, like on this one, we use the William Morris design on this one. This one we covered with fabric and used this little graphic. But seriously, you can, I mean, you could have definitely put this one on here instead. Do whatever you want. You could have covered this one in fabric too. Just do just like we did with this, just bigger, you know? Um, there's just so many options, so many options. So. I want you to get out some glue and I want you to get out some paper and some thread and I want you to have fun. I want you to make a little book. If you've never made one before, you can, you can do this. I have all the faith in the world that you can do this. And I think once you get one or two of these done, I think you're gonna think, oh, well that, that's not that bad. And then you'll want to do more complicated, more, more advanced techniques. So definitely if you've never made a book before, either grab an old book that you're going to send to the thrift store anyway, or get some card stock and make yourself a little dude. Because I mean, how cute is that, right? And another thing you can do with these books, let me show you. I have some little eyelets and you can get these all kinds of places. They even have them at like hardware stores and that kind of place. I think I got these at the fabric store. So they have these over in the sewing notions and that kind of thing. And I have this little guy, which is a Cropodile 2. Um, it's, um, We Are Memory Keepers is the, is the brand. They have, there's all kinds of eyelet setters though. So you can use whatever one you want. And some eyelet kits will come with like little setters that you can use with a hammer too. So let's say we wanted to add a tie onto our book. And so let's, let's measure here. Let me get my losing stuff again. I'm losing it. You're like, yeah, we know, Nick. We know you're losing it. Oh, it's so cute that you know that. Okay, so I'm just going to line this up on my marks here. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
10, 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the middle one right here. And I'm just gonna put a little dot right there where I want my eyelet. I'm going to, these are little dudes, but I think they go in the bigger. So it's got an, a 1 8 punch and a 3 16 And for some reason, I think it takes the 3 16 So I just line it up in there. Um, I put the dot right under where I want my eyelet and it punches it out. And then you gotta push this all the way up to the front because now we're gonna set the eyelet. And so there's our hole right there. And then this little, come on, this little thing at the end, you can spin this for different kinds of eyelets. I think this is the one I need for this one. And read the manual, because I didn't. <laughs> I, was, I was setting the eyelet in with the, um, the shaft part sticking up. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's not how you do it. It's the other way around. But you know, um, half the time I think I'm, I don't know, so I don't know why I don't want to read manual, manuals. It's like, I think I can figure it out. It's like, come on, I know how to do this. And then, and then I fail and when all else fails, you read the manual, right? So there is, oh, I keep doing that. So there is our little hole. There is the, the, little, the back side, and we can do the same thing on the back. So let me line this up again. And one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can totally do this before you put pages in it. So, you know, if that, if you know exactly what you want to do, um, as far as, you know, if you want to put some put some uh, closures, some ties or something on your book, you can absolutely, if, you, if you've already got that planned, I'm not real good at planning, so sometimes this happens, you know, the very last thing, or one of the very last things. Okay, so, and there is that one. So now we have two eyelets. You put aside Mr. Crocodile. You can also do that in these. Um, if you have a book that has a really, really thick cover, you might have to get a bigger eyelet than what I used on this one. So, because sometimes they're not, uh, the shaft part isn't long enough to fit through the book and then fold over too. So, you know, kind of measure that up. So, I'm sure you guys have used eyelets before. Okay, so now, there's all kinds of things you could do here. So here is, this is from Hobby Lobby, I think, and it's just, it's just twine. So you can use twine if you want. This is some crinkle uh, seam binding. You can get a stretch of this. You can cut it into two pieces and then tie them together, or you can leave it as one piece. I am going to, I'm going to I'm going to cut two pieces. So, here is this one, and I'm just going to put it through there just to measure it. Now I'm going to fold it in half. This stuff's so springy. It's like a little girl's hair when it's curly. Okay, I'm gonna fold it in half so that this is the folded, this is the folded side right here. I'm gonna fit this through. It's easier to go through this side. This side is a little more rough and it might, you might catch your ribbon. So let's push that through and then you open that, that fold and you pull through these threads or these tails. And then you just pull it tight and you can tie these in a knot if you want at the end or you don't have to. And we'll do the same thing with this one. <laughs> okay, this thing's like it's got springs in it. And then we'll do the same thing with this dude. Pull that through. And then snug up the tails. 
And then you have some cute little ties. You can tie your book shut so that nobody can read your stuff. How dare they even think that they could read your stuff. So I hope you guys have a great morning, afternoon, evening, no matter where you are in the world. And just know that there's a big, huge love and hugs from Nick. And I will see you guys real soon in the next video. Bye, guys.